Today I want to talk about function pointers in C. A function pointer is really just a pointer, a variable that stores the address of a function that we want to call later on. Function pointers often intimidate and confuse students. Why? Well, C's syntax is really to blame here. It's flexible and powerful, but it isn't always easy to follow. When you declare an integer, it's easy to follow. The type information is on the left, and the name is on the right. Even as the type information gets more complicated, it still stays on the left, and the name stays on the right. So this is pretty clear for students as they're learning. But when I declare a function pointer, it might look something like this. Or worse, it might look like this. The problem with function pointers is that the name, the identifier, actually goes in the middle. Yes, you heard me correctly. The name goes in the middle. So to read this declaration, we follow the, the right-left rule. First, we find our identifier. My identifier is foo. We look to the right. There's really nothing there. We look to the left, and we see, oh, there's a pointer. So foo is a pointer. Then we pop out of the parentheses, we look right, and we see, ah, it's a, it's a function that takes three ints. Then we look left, and we see, and it returns an int pointer. So foo is a pointer to a function that takes three ints and returns an int pointer. Pretty simple. When you create a function main, main is a function that takes two arguments, an integer and a pointer to a character pointer, and it returns an int. And this isn't always pretty, but it's fairly straightforward once you know the rule. So now you know how to declare a function pointer. Now you can take these function pointers and pass them and pass these functions as arguments to other functions. Now we're not actually passing the function itself. We're passing a pointer to the function. But other than that, it acts very much like you're passing the function. It allows you within functions to call functions that you passed in that are defined at runtime, not at compile time. For example, let's say that I have a function that is going to perform some operation on two integers, but I want to be able to reuse the same code, but with different operations. Uh, I could define this function, and then when I pass in, I can pass in a function pointer to define the operation. So I can pass in a function pointer that tells us to add these two numbers, or subtract these two numbers, or multiply these two numbers. And this allows this the function that actually performs the operation to be independent of the of the rest of the system. And so we can we can define these more dynamically, and this gives us a lot of flexibility. Now let me make one other recommendation before we end. Now, so I explained the right-left rule, and that's all good, but still that doesn't stop you from ending up with declarations that are really messy and hard to understand. So a recommendation that I often make to students is that they use type defs. You basically define a type that represents your function pointer, and now you're back to a readable declaration where the type information is on the left, and the identifier is on the right. And this will make it easier for you to follow what your code is doing. And it'll probably help others to be able to read your code as long as they can understand what the type def actually means. And that's it for today. Thank you. I hope this is helpful. Have fun with your use of function pointers. And I'll see you next time.